Hi, this is State Representative Jeff Shipley coming to you from Fairfield, Iowa today. Uh, it's Wednesday before Election Day, so things are really getting uh, pretty busy and hectic around here. But wanted to take a brief moment to just address some of the uh, attack pieces that have been going out there. Uh, some of these are, are very misleading. Um, I know a lot of people have a mailbox just full of these things, not just from our race, but for the Senate race, the U.S. House. And most of them end up in the trash can, but... Um, I think it is important to go through some of these things because there are important issues at stake. And I think the very first point I want people to realize is that, you know, each of these things costs usually at least a few thousand dollars to put out, sometimes a lot more. And that just shows how valuable your vote is. So um, given how valuable your vote is, it is important that we go through and talk about these things. All right, so first, um, first and foremost, this was a, fu a fun one. Uh, Jeff Shipley's dangerous idea. Jeff Shipley voted to legalize fentanyl for recreational use in Iowa. And um, this, in my opinion, is just outright lies. I mean, just really de deliberately misleading. I think you really have to be disrespectful to voters to put something out like this. Um, no, I never voted to legalize recreational fentanyl. That is completely false. Um, however, I did take a vote against a drug rescheduling bill, which is the pharmacy board's annual bill and it did uh, schedule some new compounds of synthetic opioids as well as synthetic cannabinoids in Schedule 1. Um, the reason I voted against this is because, one, I, I, I can't for certain say that these substances deserve in Schedule 1, meaning that there's no clinical application for a synthetic op uh, cannabinoid, for instance, which was included in the bill. But also, just on the whole, our drug policy is failing. Um, addiction rates are through the roof. Um, legal prescription opioids are killing a lot of people, including my best friend growing up. I attended his funeral last year as a pallbearer at his funeral. He lost his decade-long battle with opioid uh, dependency. It's extremely sad. It's extremely unnecessary. And these are legal drugs that were prescribed to him from his physician. So there are a lot of important things to talk about in terms of improving our society's response to substance abuse. And um, unfortunately, you know, this type of thing just isn't one of them. So uh, very sad to see this out there. Hopefully that clarifies a little bit where I'm coming from on that issue. Another one of Jeff Shipley's dangerous ideas, prevent seniors from getting their medication. And um, yeah, I'm trying to go through these amendments here and just sometimes it's so hard for me to comprehend, um, you know, how they, how they connect these things together. But Jeff Shipley sides with insurance companies and big pharmaceutical companies over Iowa seniors. And no, what this is referencing are amendment um, proposed on budgets and typically what happens is the budget includes a lot of funding and a lot of resources for these various programs and then typically you know there's an amendment that wants to include a whole host of other things that are more sometimes there are good ideas in those amendments but they need to be voted down just for the sake of governing because um, that's what it takes to make the state of Iowa work and that's what makes it take to make Iowa recognizes the number one financially resilient state in the nation is making sure we have sound conservative budgeting to provide for the long-term stability of our state. Um, but no, there's just very little truth in any of these healthcare claims. Um, and I'm definitely on the record of making sure that uh, seniors have access to all their pharmaceuticals and nothing I did would have prevented that. Um, and all the Republicans are clear. I mean, yeah, we are Republicans. We might have some disagreements, but at the end of the day, common sense prevails and we're not a bunch of people trying to take medicine away from grandma. I mean, it's just not the reality of, of what we're doing in Des Moines. Um, a couple of those other healthcare topics were pre-existing conditions. So all of that's governed at the federal level and nothing I can do would affect pre-existing conditions and President Trump and basically all other Republicans. I mean, over the last 10 years, it's been clear um, that health insurance should cover pre-existing conditions. That's what the public wants and it's gonna stay that way. And nothing I could even do as a state legislator would change that. So when you see these kind of lines of attack, they are being deliberately misleading, they are stoking fear and trying to just paint an unrealistic picture of what's possible. The other thing, um, you know, I've still been getting some criticism over Republican privatization of Medicaid, which continues to be a work in progress and reportedly is going a lot better than it has just a few years ago. Um, sadly, there are still Medicaid issues that come up, and when a Medicaid issue is brought to my attention, I pursue it rigorous, rigorously and try to help our constituents however I can. And I have plenty of constituents that, that will attest to that. 
And also, I have taken bipartisan votes on Medicaid. I did vote on a Democrat amendment, which would ensure that the managed care corporations are thoroughly audited by the state auditor to uh, just get a transparent readout of how much money is being saved in our current managed care system um, versus the previous state-run model. So, you know, I have taken bipartisan votes on those issues. I do want to make sure that we're not um, leaving anyone out to dry or that we're, that we're putting these corporate profit incentives where they don't need to be. And yeah, I'm very committed to make sure that every Iowan has the health care they need, whether it's on Medicaid or otherwise, that they have the freedom to choose their own health care plans. So um, just in my mind, a lot of those health care attacks just don't, just don't add up. And um, it continues to be a big work in progress. And if anyone thinks that they can wave a magic wand and solve all your health care solutions, um, I think that's a little bit of a utopian thinking and um, doesn't really get to the heart of the issue. The next fun one, this is a flyer that went out on um, some of my statements on coronavirus. Um, so yeah, I, I have given some rambunctious speeches. I do speak a lot off the cuff and I do do a lot of media interviews. Um, basically, if anyone asks to talk to me, I'll talk to them even if they have the camera rolling. You know, I'll talk to anyone without notes and I'll just do the best I can. Uh, but going through, it says Jeff Shipley's dangerous idea. Jeff Shipley has been condemned by local health officials for spreading misinformation about the coronavirus. Um, as far as I know, that's not true. Um, I have decent working relationships with all the health officials that I know. Certainly, I'm in touch with them on a pretty regular basis because I track health policy uh, pretty regularly. Um, so I, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe I was ever condemned. I was questioned, sure. I mean, I was in, in, maybe uh, given in, inquisitive, um, but not, not condemned. Um, he told constituents not to follow any CDC or public health guidelines. Um, and that's not really true either. All I ever said, though, is that the CDC and public health guidelines must be practical and specific and effective. And right now, at several instances, is not what we've been getting. So I've been vocal on that, that, yeah, if we're going to recommend something for public health, it better be effective. And that's why I've been talking a lot about vitamin D and sunshine, because statistically, I know that 80% of COVID fatalities are associated with a deficiency in vitamin D. Yet somehow when I bring that up, they, they call me unscientific. Um, thankfully now, even Dr. Fauci is talking about some of these things, but it took five or six months when if we had a true pandemic response back in March, yeah, heck, back in February, we could have been distributing this information, distributing uh, the tangible nutritional supports that we need to, to, in the community, whether it's vitamin C or vitamin D, or just ensuring that we have access to natural light, natural sunshine, fresh air, all those things that are critical for health, but um, sadly don't get recognized or acknowledged the way that I feel they need to. And then it says, Jeff Shipley's votes put us in danger. Voted to force sick people to work if they're exposed to COVID-19. That's not true. Voted to, against sick leave for Iowans. Um, and again, this is, it's just this mealy mouth political double speak, this double talk where, you know, you vote down an amendment and they just jumped all sorts of these conclusions. But no, everything that was passed in the Republican budget offered protection for this. A lot of that money came from federal CARES Act allocations. So most of these issues have been sorted at this, at this, both at the state and at the federal level. And, and these just, it's just not true. Um, voted to protect employers who knowingly expose their employees to COVID-19. And again, that's just so hyperbolic where the COVID liability um, bill that we talked, it basically, if an employer is doing something that is egregiously reckless or certainly doing something deliberately, um, yeah, there's still just so much liability and claims that can be made there. But if you have an employer that is following every health precaution and is operating within uh, health guidelines, our employers need a predictable and practical regulatory environment to work in. That's how. That's what we need to get our economy um, back going again. We don't need an overly litigious environment where everyone's suing one another because, oh, I think you might have got me sick or, or, or whatever. I mean, that just doesn't solve the problem. And again, it's um, just the opposite of personal responsibility. So we, we, we should never be looking to the courts to solve our problems anyway. Um, we need, just need to sort them out as people. But anyway, it's just a whole host of things there. Um, you know, they talk about, oh, I said the virus isn't even killing anyone, um, which, which is a much larger quote in context. And if you look at my Facebook, I thought I did a very good job of informing people on the active hospitalization rate, the current ICU percentage is occupied, um, ICU occupancy figures, and also the fatality figures. So I, I've been very vocal about people um, who passed away, but I think this is the thing that we really need to consider. 
is what have we gained from the pandemic response? Because I don't, I don't think as a society we're healthier uh, because of the way we respond to this pandemic. I think we would have been a lot better off if we shut down fast food restaurants. Instead, we shut down churches. Um, you know, back in March, when all this was, was getting started, I told people, I said, hey, brace for 10 times worse than the annual flu. Uh, you'll probably have loved ones that'll be affected. You know, make sure you tell them you loved one. You, you love them because you never know what can happen. Even when we were sh voting to close down the government and uh, go home and shut everything down, yeah, we, we have a lot of elderly legislators and I was praying with them because I thought I was never going to see him again. You know, I assumed that this was going to tear through and that there was going to be a 3% infection fatality rate that would leave a lot of people um, dead. The modeling, the modeling predicted 300 deaths for Jefferson County. Now, right now we're at one fatality for Jefferson County. As I'm speaking today, October 28th, Jefferson County is at one fatality for COVID. So that's 300 times less than what was predicted when we locked down and, sh and voted to shut down the state. So I think there has been a discrepancy on what the public was led to believe and uh, what actually transpired. I believe that um, there's been a lot of fear that's gripped our society and we've placed fear in the center of our community and we put fear in the center of our lives. And I think we need to replace that with gratitude. You know, I think we need to be grateful that we are so healthy. I, need to think we need, I think we need to be grateful that not as many people passed away. And um, I think that's something we need to celebrate. We need to celebrate our health. We need to affirm our health. We need to go out in the world and breathe the fresh air and be healthy human beings. And um, even giving someone a hug or sharing a smile, there are health benefits associated with that. Even the oxytocin release, the cuddle hormone you get from hugging someone and being heart to heart, that can be very beneficial to your immune system. And that a human connection can be very beneficial uh, for your emotional health. And we're not even considering these things. You know, everything's been in such a vacuum that um, these public policy, policies have not considered the human element of any of this and hasn't con considered how complex human needs are and how, how complex human health is. So um, I've been very frustrated with just the shallowness of the discussion and how I feel like people are only getting a very partial story, just a small sliver of what's really going on. And I think that's really unfortunate. And I think, um, I think flyers like these, you know, when you're spending thousands of dollars to put this fear out there, and um, I don't think it's helpful. I don't think it's helpful for our political discussions. What I think is these issues, we need everyone to come together. And because um, these issues are serious, right? Healthcare, drug use, coronavirus, they're all very serious stuff. But we need to actually come together and have a discussion. We can't just be blanketing, you know, our communities with these, with these attack ads. Um, Last but not least is education piece. This one's actually the most truthful of the, of the bunch. Uh, Jeff Shipley was the only state legislator to vote against funding for rural schools. And um, I did that in a couple different ways. But really the big thing is, is the schools are the biggest part of our community. The schools represent services that a lot of people rely on from their government. And, um, and right now, our school systems are under a lot of stress. And there are a lot of things where money could help, but there are a lot of other problems where um, they're the product of bad laws and that there are much other kind of discussions we need to have about the structures in the public school system overall that I think we need to talk about before we spend more money. So that's why I'm voting no against additional education dollars because I feel there are a lot of important discussions that just aren't being had and there are, frankly are a lot of students that aren't being supported and legislators are either too scared or too ignorant to sit down and have these discussions and and that's the thing, are these discussions so hard that we're willing to sacrifice our children? Because when I look at the, the laws governing school nutrition, I mean, the whole thing needs to go because our children are not being served. And nutrition has a direct link to student performance, to behavioral health, to overall health. And especially with the coronavirus going around, I mean, we should really be investing in the health of our children. We're not doing that. Um, educational outcomes have been poor. You know, why, uh, why is literacy so low? Why do so many people have, uh, uh, young people not have an understanding of civics or government? Um, there are a lot of huge gaps in, in learning right now and a lot of room for improvement in our school systems and a lot of students that aren't being supported. So I wanna make sure that our school system has the flexibility to uplift and empower each and every individual student. I don't care if it's private, public, homeschool, whatever. I don't care about all that. I care about an education system that serves everyone because there's a lot of tax money on the table. And um, it's very important that we could, could use for those dollars.
just for everyone because education is the most important thing um, that will determine your life success. So that's why it is worth talking about and that's why I'm not gonna sell my soul and rubber stamp more money when there's so many important discussions that we're not having. And um, again, I could talk about that for length and, and please, I would love to talk about education and uh, my proposal for school finance and how I think we could really achieve a much better education system. Um, certainly the nutrition stuff, I could talk for a while. So yeah, anyway, I hope that gives additional perspective on um, you know some of these flyers going on. And um, you know, I, I would certainly love to earn your vote because there are a lot of important issues. I, I really hold Fairfield values, uh, certainly when it comes to safe technologies or just higher standards of health and wellness. I really hold those close to my to my heart, and I want to be your partner in Des Moines for these Fairfield values. So whether that's you know safe technologies on the five G and the smart meter issues, I want to be there. Uh, to be overseeing everything the Iowa Utility Board does to make sure they are serving our community and that we're not being ignored. Um, I want to ask the tough questions on these five, five G installations. Is our data being protected? Is our is our safety being protected? What are the safeguards in place against all this radiation? What do we know and what don't we know? Let's get all that on the table. You know, what does the science really say? Um, how can I, as a leader, help line up everyone in our community? from the local level, the county level, to get a unified vision or at least agreement or consensus um, because everyone's affected. You know, when a line energy jacks up their rates from their smart meters and charges everyone more money, everyone's affected by that. So um, these are important conversations. There's a lot more work to be done. And I would love to be in your, your partner in Des Moines for, for Fairfield Values for Health, Happiness, and, and to just share the peace and love that we have for Iowa. So anyway, if you've looked at this far, thanks for watching. Again, just um, if you've been getting a lot of advertisements like these, this just demonstrates how valuable your vote is, that they are willing to spend thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars in this race in influencing your opinions and your thoughts on these issues. So I just really appreciate everyone who's taken the time to reach out to me personally, whether we've talked over the phone at your doorstep uh, or had a lunch or something, just I think those conversations, that genuine human connection, that's what I really wanna invest in. So. Um, I hope we can keep having these conversations. These are very difficult issues and we all need to work together to figure them out. So thank you again and uh, looking forward to staying in touch.